Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my dad, I won that state championship in shot put. And my dad had a subtle way of saying, hey, son, won't you stay down and watch the 6 eight throw? I did. I wouldn't have made the finals. You know what I mean? Parents sometimes have a, have a way of being nice to you. Congratulations, but you're still not very good, you know, that type thing. But, uh, Greg, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, the best of the best, William King, uh, when they added David Cutcliffe, Cutcliffe to this group, uh, enormous benefit for us coaches. Uh, Dave's been through all that and, and a very, very uh, great hire. Very proud to be a part of the state of Arkansas, University of Arkansas, um, third consecutive top 15 finish in the Director's Cup, a uh, couple of indoor national championships with Bucky and Lance. The basketball team went to Sweet 16. Dave's team uh, had a share of the SEC uh, baseball championship. Today, um, we brought K.J. Jefferson, our quarterback, who's on the verge of setting, oh, at least six, seven records. Uh, uh, great leader for us, wonderful kid, very proud of, of him. Uh, he is our leader. He's our leader uh, both on the offense and the defense. Obviously, on one side of the ball, a lot of times you'll have leaders that are on that side of the ball. K.J. is our team leader, and uh, we're awful happy that he is. We brought Rocket Sanders, our running back, uh, rushed for over 1,400 yards last year. And the one thing I'll say about Rocket is he's never been in trouble. Uh, Class-wise, uh, uh, all his tutors, all the all the teachers uh, love him. Uh, we do too. Uh, gained another 10 pounds. Is running faster than he ever has. Has had a great off-season. Then Landon Jackson. You'll see him. Uh, he went from 236 at the end of last year to 280, running over 20 miles per hour. Uh, by the way, a, a nugget there. Him and Grace. Uh, his girl fiance just got engaged uh, a, a week or two ago. Uh, last year, uh, we were invited to our third consecutive postseason uh, bowl. Uh, obviously, uh, my first year, we weren't able to play the Texas Bowl because uh, TCU uh, had COVID problems. Uh, we've won two straight in a row. Uh, last year's game against Kansas, uh, I, it changed a lot for our program. Um, at the end uh, of the season last year, uh, we had a lot of guys in the portal. Um, we uh, had coaches that left. Uh, and for us to be uh, go to Kansas with nine or to go to the Liberty Bowl, which was a great venue, um, and win that game with nine starters out. It showed a lot about, you know, people were concerned about what's going on with the program. Well, watch the Liberty Bowl. We've got nine guys that, that are out, and we win the game against a very uh, good opponent. We have to get some fa things fixed. I think we've had a good off offseason. Um, we lost four games last year by nine points, ended up winning seven games. Uh, we've got a lot of situational football to get fixed. We've worked on it. I've worked on myself. Um, we, I won't go for it on fourth down very often. So I have to work on it to see if we can get it a little bit more in practice. At the same time, we're helping the defense. The analytics certainly has changed football. I've got to get in, into it a little bit more than what I have in the past. Um, but we have situational football. But our program is built on toughness, physicality, uh, the ability to be coached, the ability to be loyal to each other. And uh, I feel like our team is that way. We have two new coordinators. And I'm proud of, of – I was proud. I said it last year. We had uh, one of three – one of eight schools that had, had both coordinators uh, back last year. Uh, we lost Barry Odom, a great friend of mine. Uh, got the head coaching job at uh, UNLV. We'll do an outstanding job there. We lost Kendall Bryles. Kendall Bryles, we just came off – a season of 6,000 plus yards, one of only three times that that's ever happened in the University of Arkansas history uh, to TCU. 
very grateful, very thankful for those two guys and what they did for us. However, they left, and now we've got, we, we, we need to replace, which we have. I want to talk to you about uh, Dan Enos, our offensive coordinator. We were together in 2015. One of those three 6,000-plus seasons was when he was with us at Arkansas then. Uh, Travis Williams, uh, we went to UCF to get him as our new defensive coordinator. I interviewed four or five guys when I got done with him. I uh, called Hunter Urechek and told him this, this is the guy. Um, in the portal world and the coaching world, he's very aggressive. And I knew in the portal world, if we lost somebody, we could dang sure replace them. And uh, Travis was, was uh, very, he's a great man, very positive guy, really good coach. Uh, we went to Florida State and got Marcus Woodson as our defensive uh, backfield coach, co-defensive coordinator. Darren Wilson was an analyst at Florida coaching our corners, and Morgan Turner has had eight to nine guys uh, play in the NFL when he was a tight end coach at Stanford, and we were able to get him from Stanford. One of the key cogs to us was getting Ben Souders from Louisville. Ben. Ben is our new strength coach. He's done an outstanding job with these kids. Uh, holds them accountable. Uh, you'll, you'll see the three that we brought. We've got a whole bunch of guys that look like that. And uh, that's uh, credit to Ben Souders and his staff. We obviously have a challenging schedule. I think last year somebody told me we played seven teams in the top 25. Well, that's the SEC. And uh, uh, we're excited about that. This year, our crossover games, we go to Florida. I don't believe we've ever won at Florida. Um, we have Missouri at home, and then we have a, a non-conference schedule. Uh, we're excited to get BYU again. Uh, Kalani Satake is an outstanding coach, and uh, we're excited to get BYU playing here as we played them down there last year. 14 returning starters, four on offense, seven on defense, and our three specialists. Um, Brady Latham, Bo Lemmer are both uh, catalysts to our offensive line. We're going to need them. Uh, we've moved Bo Lemmer to center uh, to help us in that aspect. Eric Gregory, Nudu McLarkin, Hudson Clark, those guys have played a lot of ball for us on defense. And, of course, Eli Stein and, and, and Max Fletcher and Cam Little at the specialists. Roster additions, we had 21 high school scholarships addition, 21, 12 of that 21 came in in January. Nine of them came in this late May. 19 additions to from the portal. We addressed every uh, problem that we felt like we had, whether that be starting or whether that be depth-wise, depth uh, except the only position that we did not replace in the portal was running back. We're expecting all those guys to, to contribute to us. I'm looking forward to year 2023, being the head coach of University of Arkansas. I'm looking forward to my fourth year being the head coach at Arkansas. Congratulations to the media. It's your day. Uh, congratulations. I, I want to thank you all nationally uh, for the kind things you've done for our program. Uh, this is what it's for, for you guys to sell our and help us sell our story. And we appreciate you so much. I'm really indebted to the guys from Arkansas and all the things that you do uh, for me and for the university and for the football program. With that, I'll take questions. Thank you, Coach Pittman. If you have a question, raise your hand. Pam, Aaron, and Asher will have microphones. We'll start right in front of me, Coach. A second row right here in the middle with Tom. Hey, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. You just mentioned the number of players you got out of the portal, a lot of them on defense. Yeah. And Brian Kelly was here saying when you get that many guys from the portal, you really don't know what you got. Uh, I, what gives you confidence that the, the guys you brought in are going to work and – that defense will be better this season? Well, I think, uh, first of all, the guys that we have on our team, I think, are better. You, you know, they've improved. They've improved their strength and their speed and those things. Um, some of those times we, we've seen in spring ball, you know, I think nine of them are not, you know, they're new, new. Those, I don't know, I'm not speaking for Coach, I, but I, I'm assuming that's what he's – talking about a little bit more, the brand new ones that came in in June and those things, you really don't know. Uh, you, you don't have a clue. 
Uh, but for that part of it, you're looking for some depth. And man, if somebody will come in and able to start from that group, boy, you've really hit the jackpot. So I agree with Coach on that. Um, how we're going to be better on defense, I, you know, I think we're going to be better on the D line. And I think that's going to help us. We're going to be able to play a four man front. I think we'll be a little more aggressive. Uh, we've always been trying to get man-to-man -man cover corners, and I think between Snacks and Nudie and Day Day and Braxton and, and some of those guys, I think we're going to have an opportunity to play a little bit more man, which will allow us to be a little more aggressive and move that front. Moving the front helps you in the run game as much as it does in the pass game, and, and I think well, we've got to do that a little bit more than what we have in the past. Coach, we'll stay in this middle section to your right, just on the aisle, Trey. Hey, Coach, Trey Biddy, Hog Sports, 24-7 Sports. Uh, kind of a similar question about the portal. When you look back at when you were hired, uh, the 2020 class, you had such a quick turnaround. You fast forward today, there's only two players left from that class, yeah. guys that should be redshirt juniors and seniors. 2021, you weren't able to face-to-face -face recruit, had some misevaluations there. I'm curious. Have you ever thought like how much trouble you might be in now if not for the transfer portal and how thankful you, are you that it came along kind of when it did with transfer portal and NIL? Absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, though, Trey, I think part of the transfer portal is the guys left. You, you know what I mean? Uh, we have two, but that's because some guys left and this, that. Now, I'll tell you what, I learned my lesson uh, a couple years ago because we were talking about who could we afford to lose, you know, if we if we lost some guys and then we need some scholarships, all that kind of stuff. Not running them out of the program. We talked about who could, and um, I learned my lesson. I, I went this spring and I said, hey, I don't want nobody to leave. I don't want anybody on the team to leave. Uh, if you think about it, uh, your worst player might be friends with your best player. And you're running his best friend out. You, you've not only lost the worst player on the team, you lost the best player on the team. So uh, we're not trying to lose anybody off the team. But to answer your question, I think the portal has benefited us, if that makes sense. Uh, I do think the window is way too long. I think we're trying to address that. Uh, as coaches, as, as uh, NCAA, as, as an SEC group. Um, but I do think it has benefited us. And the only way things are going to benefit it, you is if you look at the situation and go, okay, this is the cards dealt. How can we have the best results out of these? And I think our coaching staff's done a nice job of replacing. Coach, we'll go right down this middle aisle, right here on the near side. Hi, Coach. Clark Brooks on three in SEC Stat Cat. Garth Brooks? Clark Brooks, C-L-A-R-K. Oh. I get it all the time. Get it all getting, the well, time. Well, no, I just thought it was. I was getting ready to get your autograph. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach Bryles has helped lead your offense to lead the conference in explosive play rate each of the last two years. You have 40 more by volume than the next closest conference offense. I wouldn't necessarily categorize Dan Enos's offenses at Maryland as potent. Was that a sign that you're trying to trade? a little bit more consistency for potency or are you still confident you can still be the SEC's best at capturing big plays? Was that a question? Yes, sir. Um, well, I hired Dan Enos because I th think he's a hell of a football coach. So, um, and I, I get what you're talking about. But Dan wasn't dealt the same players that we have on our team either. So we're, that's yet to be yet to be seen. Uh, I, had, I hired Dan Enos because I thought he was the best play caller I've ever worked with. And uh, I felt like that's what he what we need. But you're right. Explosive plays score points. And uh, so that would that be a concern? Not necessarily a concern, but uh, we're certainly uh, think about that all the time. Coach Thank will go right in front question. of me in the front row. Teresa. To your left, Coach. Hi, Therese Hi, Walker, the Associated Press. You, you mentioned the, the portal having benefited from it, but it being maybe a little bit too long. Are there any other ways that maybe the transfer portal can be, you know, uh, any other ideas to tighten it, fix it, make it more effective uh, to, to everybody? Well, I believe that kids already know if they want to transfer, I think they know. I mean, it's like a house coming soon for sale. Now on Twitter, it's I'm getting ready to go in the transfer portal because the rules say you can't talk to them all this, so they're letting the world know they're getting ready to. 
I think they already know. I think a week is plenty of time. It's going to be a lot better for roster management. It's going to allow us to, if a guy goes in the portal, allow us to go back to high school and recruit. Right now, it's very, very hard if you lose a guy in the portal not to go replace him with a portal guy. So I think uh, closing that window down somewhat. Uh, if I'm a grad transfer and I've transferred once as a grad transfer, to me, that's that's plenty. You, you, to me, you can't go transfer again. Uh, uh, some of those things, I think, would help roster management. NIL's part of NIL problem comes with the ability to transfer. And if we close that window down, uh, maybe uh, some of the financial things that you're hearing in NIL uh, might be uh, become more true than maybe just words. Coach, we'll go back over to this middle section on the right-hand side, about four rows back. Coach Travis Gailey with orangebloods.com. I'm curious if you've heard any, what you're hearing from fans and boosters about the addition of Texas bring, coming back to the SEC and renewing this rivalry. Well, I think uh, obviously the state of Arkansas is ecstatic about, you know, uh, having an opportunity to play Texas. Uh, and, for that matter, Oklahoma. Proximity is so good. It's, you know, it's so good for us. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be this costly on fans because they can drive back and forth uh, to Norman and to Austin. Um, but I think they're uh, relatively – everybody's really excited about that. Obviously, we're bringing two powerful storied programs into the SEC. So, we know they're going to be really great opponents, uh, but I think everybody's excited. I'm excited. You know, I'm from Oklahoma. Uh, 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 grew up a Sooner fan until I moved out to Eastern Oklahoma, became a Hog fan. But um, yeah, I think it would be a great deal for the SEC and, and specifically Texas because of the old uh, Southwest Conference rivalry. Coach, we'll go back over here to our left side on the aisle, Trey. Trey Schapp, Buzz Radio Network. Coach, how do you feel about your offensive line, specifically the tackle position, and then the depth now that you have in the quarterback room? Well, at tackle, you know, we have very – we have talented tackles. Uh, uh, Devin Manuel and Patrick Kudis. We, we like those guys. We like Tykees Crawford. We like Andrew Chambly. And Marion Harris could, could go out there and play. They are not guys that's proven on a Saturday afternoon yet. Are they talented? Yes. And you know I've been an O-line coach forever. I've got one of the best offensive line coaches out there in Cody Kennedy. But uh, these guys are really good players. I know they can play. They just haven't yet because we've had the luxury of having older guys on the team and even – six-year guys, super seniors, you know, that have kept them off the field. But I think it's about time they go out there and show what they're going to do, and I have no doubt I feel really good about that. Coach, we'll go back down to center aisle, it's about halfway back. Hey, Sam, it's Anthony Dash of UJSports.com. Kind of go back to Ben Saddle just a little bit. You guys were at Georgia together, obviously, for a few years. Was there anything uh, during those that time uh, that you kind of kind of caught your eye with him? And a second question, you added Jaheim Singletary to your program as well. What do you expect him to bring this season? Jaheim's a little bit like what we talked about because we, we haven't had an opportunity to see him uh, as much. You know, we didn't have a spring ball with him. Uh, but... Uh, so we'll see. Obviously, we took him because uh, we thought he could be an outstanding player for us. Uh, what we've seen is work ethic and all those things is heading that certainly that direction. Uh, ben Souders, I loved him. Uh, I liked him as, as a man. I like his work ethic. I like what he's about. He's a Christian man. I like everything about him. And uh, when, when uh, we had a turnover there, uh, he was the first and only call that I made. Go back to this middle section to your right, Coach, again, over on the aisle. Hey, Sam, Andy Wittry with On3. We know there's alignment between Arkansas and the State House. You've one of the more advantageous state laws nationally. Uh, the Knoxville News Sentinel reported that Tennessee actually had their AG step in and cite their NIO law to maybe prevent a bull ban. What is that like when the State House is supporting the school and there's that alignment legislatively? Strong. I talk about the hog is strong. I must be, need to talk about the state is strong. It's strong. And, uh, 
you know, we can't say much of anything. We, we go one side or another public, publicly for political or anything like that. We all, you know, we can't. We don't have a voice. We get in trouble. Uh, but I'm very uh, happy with our university and how they tried to help us and certainly Congress and, and the state, uh, excuse me, the state representatives in University of Arkansas or in the state of Arkansas. Okay, we'll stay in the middle aisle, about halfway back. Hey, Sam, Colin Wilson with the Action Network. Travis Williams had one of the most aggressive defenses and finished top 10 in Havoc down in Central Florida. Often, sometimes bring six, seven, eight. Are we going to see a more aggressive Arkansas defense this year? Well, I imagine we'll see a more aggressive. Well, I don't want to be that aggressive, man. They would cover zero a lot, and I'm watching it. And so when I interviewed him, I said, "Hey, man, man I, I, I want to go after people, but every now and then, can you leave a guy in the middle of the field back there? You know?" Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I, I mean. Those type of things uh, have turnovers that come. You, you, sometimes you think about, well, what if your corner gets beat and, you know, they go score and all that. But I like his thinking. I think his corner is, well, well what happens when we hit the quarterback and, and the ball goes up in there and we, we get it and go score a touchdown too. So I like that. Um, uh, I have a lot of confidence in him. And uh, uh, we will certainly be more aggressive. That's just his, his nature and his style. Coach, we'll go over here to our left on the far side near the aisle. Coach Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Uh, can I ask you just your earliest Oklahoma football memory? And then these schools have only played three times since 1926. Do you sense a natural rivalry could develop? You know, the proximity is there. Uh, do you think that will happen now that they're joining the SEC? Well, my first memory of Tulsa World is when in 1979, uh, I made the uh, Tulsa World uh, All-State team. Um, that's true. What nobody else to give it to? There's like three running backs in the state. But uh, the the did you say Tulsa World? Uh, Oklahoma football memory. You said you were an Oklahoma fan. I was one of your first Oklahoma football memory. Oh, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> Brian Bosworth. You know, one of them. And I was a football fan, but one of them was when Arkansas, you know, in 78, you know, OU's got to win a natty or win the game, they win the natty. And then, you know, Arkansas got them 31 to 6. I, I, at that point, I wasn't, a, I wasn't an Arkansas fan. I was an OU fan, you know, at the time. But, you know, uh, you have Billy Sims. I mean, there's a lot of great memories. Um, we couldn't really afford to go to the game or anything like that. But, um, a lot of great memories, Oklahoma, Barry Switzer, you know, of course, Stoops now, you know, was the next one. And, uh, yeah, a lot of great memories. Powerful program, uh, great program. Coach, we'll go in the middle section in front of me, about halfway back, right here in the blue. Hey, Coach, Brad Crawford, 24-7 Sports. Two years ago, K.J. Jefferson entered the season as one of the SEC's lower-tier quarterbacks. Now he's arguably the top returning player at his position. What are your expectations for him now in his final year at Arkansas and how he's going to fit in this new Danny Enos offense? I think he's going to fit great. I think he would have to answer that better than I can. But I think he's going to fit great in it. He, his, his extra study off the field has – has gone through the roof. Uh, I think he believes in Dan. I know Dan believes in him, him as well as I do. I think it's going to be his best season he's had. Uh, you know, whether we run him quite as much as we have in the past, I, I, I don't know that. Uh, maybe we throw the ball a little bit more than with him carrying it. We have to keep him healthy. Um, obviously, we have Jacoby Criswell and Cade Fortin behind him, but he's won for a reason. And uh, so I think he's going to be have be very active, but he's probably going to throw the ball a little bit more than what he has in the past. Coach, we're going to go all the way in the back on the left-hand side, back corner. Coach, Rob Brown, Sideline Sports Memphis. You famously said coming off the field after a big Razorback win one time, how are you going to celebrate? I think I'm going to go home and have me a cold beer. Would that ever include a Ham's beer? And number two, we're all proud of Christian Brothers High School alumni of Patrick Kudis. How important is the city of Memphis and West Tennessee to Razorback football fortunes? And thank you for being here. 
go hogs. I like an old ham, old ham beer, but you burp a lot afterwards. Um, you seem like you got a good job, man. Kind of step it up a little bit. Um, West Memphis, West Memphis, Memphis area. Um, we're, we go in there every year. The more we get, the better off those kids do, the more we'll be able to be welcomed back in there. But certainly you could see even at the Liberty Bowl, the following that we have from that area of the country. And uh, it's not home per se, but it's home for a lot of uh, Memphis, Tennessee people uh, to be Razorbacks. Okay, we'll go to this middle section right, Kirk, right here in front, Coach. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Sam, with the sad passing of Mike Leach, uh, should we assume you've taken over the title of the college football's most colorful and entertaining ah. personality? Man, I couldn't be, I couldn't come close to him. Uh, we miss him, don't we? I mean, we do. Uh, a lot of fun. Honest as a day is long, you know, and he's thought about a lot of his answers. Some he didn't. You know, I'll say this. Somebody asked me, you know, how did you know him well? I said, no. He said, well, you're going to the funeral. I said, I am because he'd be at mine. That's just what kind of guy he was. Always calm all the time. Uh, a lot of respect for him. Uh, we go to the Liberty Bowl, and the people at the Liberty Bowl can't quit talking about all the things that Mike Leach had said about me because they were Arkansas fans the year before. Um, incredible man, and, uh, and, and let's be honest, we miss him. The game will miss him as well. But I want to say this. Mississippi State got it right. When that happened, they hired Coach Arnett. He's the right hire for them. He's a good coach. And uh, we talk a lot about the other part of it, but I think Zach Arnett's going to do a heck of a job at Mississippi State. Time for two more. We'll start over here on the right, Trey. Got Trey Biddy, Hog Sports. Uh, a couple of years ago, 2021, you said that uh, you were the defending national champions for the toughest schedule in the country. Yeah. And looking ahead to 2022, it looked like you were going three peat. You might have a little bit more argument. Um, yeah. Excuse me, in 2023, you might have a little bit more argument on that. But that four game stretch where you start out SEC play, Baton Rouge, you play Texas A&M in Arlington, Oxford, Mississippi and then Alabama to wrap it up. There's probably not another team that has a tougher stretch like that in the country. Just curious on your thoughts and how you how you manage that. And I know you take it one game at a time, but I mean, that's that's a lot right there. I think it's a gift that keeps on giving. You know, it seems like every year we've got a stretch in there, especially Trey on this year. In other words, two years ago when we were nine and four, uh, we had a five-game stretch. Three of them were at home. Well, not really. One was in Little Rock. One was at, at uh, Dallas. You know what I mean? Similar situation a little bit for us now. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the games in Little Rock. We're going to open the season there this year. But, but uh, yeah, um, I think you just have to manage uh, e each game separately. Uh, but... Um, the heat has something to do with it. The length of uh, the length that you practice, where they're going to wear uh, pads or spiders, all these type of things come into travel and uh, and weather. And uh, so, yeah, it's a tough stretch. Uh, we've got to get uh, after that stretch, but uh, we've noticed it on the schedule as well. All right, we'll take one final question, second row, Tom. Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Trey Biddy, you took my question right there. Um, on the spur of the moment, Rocket Sanders in the running back room, why, why was Rocket able to go from being a high school kind of receiver to being a standout running back? And um, could you talk about him and the room, the depth you have? I think, I think because of who Rocket Sanders is. I mean, he's a hardworking guy that you'd want to bring home to every meal. Great guy. Uh, so I think that has something to do with it. Um, his work ethic, who he is, just incredible guy. And, you know, he's fast and 240 pounds. That helps, too. Um, now, the room, you look at A.J. Green, really good player, good player. Um, you look at Rashad DeBenny. You look at Dom Johnson. Dom, Dominique, you know, he started the Outback Bowl for us, but 
he just never had the confidence to play much last year. Uh, he's healthy. He'll be back. And uh, so I think those four guys will take – I think we're going to have us good running back room again. But it, it, the leader of that room is Rocket with A.J. being right there with him. Coach Pittman, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.